The morning of Sunday, November 20th, 2011, started out like any other in the small, close-knit community of Pleasant Garden, North Carolina. Families were settling in for quiet days of rest and worship. But by the time the sun set that evening, five young lives would be lost and a dark pall cast over this once peaceful town. 36-year-old Mary Ann Holder, a lifelong resident of Pleasant Garden, would shatter her community on that fateful day with a murderous rampage that left her own family members dead or wounded. Known as a caring mother who doted on her three children, no one suspected she was capable of such horrific violence. But Mary Ann had been unraveling mentally and emotionally for months, even years. A volatile cocktail of grief, failed relationships, Jealousy and fear of public shame would drive her over the edge with tragic consequences. Mary Ann's path to destruction began long before that November morning. She grew up in nearby Greensboro, North Carolina, the youngest child of James and Francis Holder. James wasn't her biological father. Francis's first marriage had ended badly when she became pregnant by another man while her husband was cheating on and abusing her. When Francis's second relationship failed, James Holder married the struggling single mother and adopted her three kids. Mary Ann finally had a stable father figure in her life. The family moved around Central North Carolina frequently during her childhood, but spent a lot of time near Pleasant Garden where Mary Ann attended elementary and middle school. It was there that she met Robert Rocky Smith, a grade ahead of her in school. Rocky's family life was also fractured. His biological parents couldn't care for their seven children, so Rocky and his twin sisters Beth and Lee were adopted by other local families. Rocky was taken in by his grandparents Tootsie and Pa living just outside Pleasant Garden on Coco Drive. Beth and Lee were adopted together by a loving couple who were part of their parents' church. The three siblings remained close, and before long Rocky and Marianne started dating. She was just 15 when she became pregnant with his child in 1991. Rocky convinced Marianne's parents to allow them to marry. The teenage newlyweds moved into Tootsie and Pa's house on Coco Drive to raise their baby daughter, Christina. Two sons soon followed Robert Dillon in 1994 and Zachary Lee in 1996. Mary Ann earned her GED, worked various jobs, and tried to be a good wife and mother. But the challenges of teen marriage and parenting were too much. When Zachary was born, she and Rocky split up, though they remained friends and co-parents. He moved out so she and the kids could stay in his grandparents' home. After the divorce, Mary Ann dated another man for over a decade, moving with her children around the Pleasant Garden area as needed. She never wanted to marry again. Her focus was her kids and her lifelong best friend, Beth. After high school, Beth married a man named Brian Suttles and had three children, son Richard and daughters Hannah Lee and Sheanne. Tragedy struck in 1999 when Beth's twin sister Lee was killed in a car accident. Then Beth's health began to fail. She nearly died giving birth to Sheanne prematurely in 2011, ending up hospitalized for weeks with a severe lung infection. Mary Ann was by her friend's side the entire time, chronicling her health battle and praising Beth's children on a Caring Bridge website. At 3.15 a.m. on March 9th, with Mary Ann keeping vigil, Beth passed away. In her grief, Mary Ann promised to take care of Beth's children as her own. She seemed completely devoted to Richard, Hannah Lee, and newborn Sheehan. In the months after Beth's death, Mary Ann's life grew increasingly chaotic. She moved back into the Coca Drive home, which was now owned by a family friend who rented it to her. Soon, numerous children filled the modest house. In addition to Mary Ann's sons, Dylan and Zach, Beth's kids, Richard and Hannah, were now under her roof. 15-year-old Michaela, the girlfriend of 17-year-old Dylan, also came to live at Coco Drive. Michaela was the daughter of Mary Ann's half-brother James and needed shelter from family issues at home. Neighbors worried about the constant noise and traffic at Mary Ann's home at all hours, but she insisted the children were her life. Under the surface, however, Mary Ann was under immense strain. For years, she had carried on an affair with a married man named Randy Lamb, who sat with her on the board of a local community center. When she ended the relationship 18 months prior, Randy's wife Jennifer made threats to sue Mary Ann for alienation of affection. 
a tort claim specific to North Carolina that allows spouses to sue paramours for destroying their marriage. Jennifer had learned of the affair and filed restraining orders against Mary Ann for harassing her husband. Faced with the imminent threat of a lawsuit, Mary Ann panicked. A public court case could raise questions about her morality and fitness as a guardian for Beth's kids. On Saturday, November 19th, she settled out of court with the Lambs, handing over a $10,000 check to make the lawsuit go away. But by the next morning, something had snapped inside Mary Ann's psyche. That Sunday, she drove to confront Randy in person at his workplace, the Aviation Center at Guilford Technical Community College. An argument ensued, ending with her pulling out a handgun and shooting him in the shoulder as he fled to his car. Randy called Jennifer as he sped to the hospital, telling her what transpired. Jennifer's chilling 9-1 call informed deputies that her cheating husband had been attacked by his mistress. Thus began a manhunt for Mary Ann Holder, sparking a tragic series of events that would leave five children dead in a community in mourning. After shooting Randy, Mary Ann drove straight home to Coco Drive. She executed her teenage sons, Dylan and Zach, at close range, shooting each in the head in their home while their young cousin Hannah looked on in horror. She then gunned down eight-year-old Hannah in similarly cold-blooded fashion. Leaving the carnage behind, Mary Ann picked up her 14-year-old son, Zachary, from a friend's house under false pretenses. As she drove with the unsuspecting boy in her car, deputies spotted the vehicle and pursued it. They witnessed Mary Ann in Zachary's life with a single bullet to the head before turning the gun on herself and committing suicide. Deputies descended on the scene at Coco Drive to find more tragedy within the walls of that house meant as a safe haven for children. 17-year-old Richard lay clinging to life after also being shot in the head by his aunt. And Dylan's 15-year-old girlfriend, Michaela, was critically wounded with a gunshot wound to her head as well. In just a few hours on that quiet November morning, Mary Ann Holder had devastated her community, her family, and her own life in an act of incomprehensible violence. Probably one of the worst situations that I've seen in my over 30 years in law enforcement is a situation where uh, we've got death, we've got drama, we've got a situation basically that uh, no one could ever imagine what happened here in Guilford County. Longtime Guilford County Sheriff B.J. Barnes says he's never seen anything like it. A woman involved in a messy love triangle goes on a shooting spree, killing two people before turning the gun on herself. Deputies say the shooter, Marianne Holder, also shot four other people. Three of them are in critical condition, and many of the victims are family members. It's a complex case involving a lot of people. So right now we're going to try and walk you through exactly what happened during this incident. Deputies say they found Holder in her car near Memorial a drive in Guilford County. She had killed herself at the end of the rampage. When police went to Holder's home on Coco Drive in Pleasant Garden, they found her older son, 17-year-old Robert Dylan Smith, shot to death. Several other kids were also shot in the head in Holder's home. One of those children was Holder's niece, eight-year-old Hannah Lee Suttles. Yesterday, we learned she died from her injuries. Injured in the shootings were Holder's nephew, 17-year-old Richard Brian Suttles, and Michaela Woods. Both are in critical condition after being shot in the head inside of Holder's home. The 15-year-old Woods was the girlfriend of Holder's older son, Robert Dylan Smith, who we mentioned was found dead in the home. Holder's younger son, Zachary Lee Smith, was inside of the car with Holder. The 14-year-old was also shot in the head and is now listed in critical condition. Finally, the man deputies say Holder was having an affair with, Randall Lamb, he is listed in stable condition after he was shot in the arm. We are getting a clearer picture of exactly what happened during that shooting rampage this weekend. Our Veronica White is live in Guilford County this morning to sort even more of this out for us. Such a tragedy, Veronica. Definitely is, and it's also a complicated situation, and I know it's difficult for people to understand, but as you mentioned, the latest update that we have is that Hannah Lee Suttles, who was the eight-year-old, she was Marianne Holder, the shooter's niece. She has died, and she is the third person to die from this. She had been in the hospital at Moses Cone in critical condition. Now, Marianne Holder, the shooter, and her 17-year-old son, Dylan Smith, uh, they had passed away on Sunday, so those were the first two people. Now, to give you kind of a rundown of everything, I know you had just mentioned a little bit of it, uh, the Guilford County Sheriff's Office says that at 8.52 Sunday morning, 
morning was when everything started. Uh, Marianne and the man that she had supposedly been having an affair with, which was Randall Scott Lamb, met at the GTCC Aviation Center on Regional Road in Greensboro, and that is when they say that Holder shot Lamb. Now, when deputies arrived around 922, they received information that Holder lived on Co Cocoa Drive. It's spelled Cocoa. It's Cocoa Drive. And the Sheriff's Department believes that after shooting Randall Lamb, Marianne Holder went to pick up her son, Zachary. And a half hour later, deputies spotted Holder's SUV on Remora Drive, and investigators found out that Holder had shot herself and her 14-year-old son, Zachary. Now, once on Cocoa Drive, they also, Cocoa Drive, they also found the four other victims. That was 8-year-old Hannah Lee that we just mentioned, 17-year-old Richard, Richard Brian Suttles, uh, who was a, her nephew, and her their friend, 15-year-old Michaela Lee Woods, all shot in the head. Holder's other son was found dead. Now, this investigation all started once dispatchers received the 911 calls from Lamb and his wife. He shot in my elbow and in my shoulder. Okay, and what happened? She shot me. Who yeah. shot you? A, a woman that I'd been having an affair with. What's her name? Mary Ann Holder. Now, this investigation is ongoing. As I mentioned, there are a lot of pieces. They're trying to piece together why exactly she did this, um, you know, what exactly the chain of events was beforehand. Uh, they said they found several notes from Marianne Holder basically taking responsibility for her actions. They also found several um, weapons that had been used as well. So they're still going into all of that right now at this time. So we have updates for you uh, later on when we hear them. I'm Veronica White in Greensboro, WXAI 12 News. All right. Thank you, Veronica. And this is a story we'll continue to follow. So stay with WXAI. XII 12 News and WXII 12.com, and we are going to talk with Sheriff BJ Barnes later on in our show. In the weeks that followed, all but young Zachary and Randy Lamb would die from their injuries. Page in Guilford County, a fifth victim dies from her injuries as we learn new details about what investigators found as they look for answers in this bizarre case. This case has rocked our community and our team has been working hard gathering any new details in this case. We're going to begin tonight with Rob Wu who has more on the very latest victim to die in this very tragic crime. Rob? Yeah, Cameron, just a few short hours ago, we learned from Guilford County Sheriff B.J. Barnes that 15-year-old Michaela Lee Woods, the girlfriend of one of Marianne Holder's sons, has died from her injuries. That brings the total number dead from Sunday's shooting to five. In all, five children were shot in the incident. The only one still alive, Holder's nephew, 17-year-old Richard Brian Suttles, who the sheriff's office says is still on life support at Moses Cone. Also in the hospital is Randall Lamb, the man who authorities say had an affair with Holder. Meanwhile, the investigation continues to unfold. Deputies executed a second search warrant on the Lamb home, and Bill O'Neill now joins us more with that story. Bill. Yeah, the search warrants, uh, Rob, are giving us an inside look at exactly what the investigators are working on in this case. The latest one once again served on the Lamb home in Greensboro, and this time investigators confiscated a pair of guns. According to the latest search warrant, investigators interviewed Randall Lamb inside his hospital room at Moses Cone on Tuesday. Lamb told them he had a gun in his possession when Mary Ann Holder shot him. It's not clear if he fired the weapon or even displayed it. The search warrant also reveals that investigators seized two automatic handguns from the Lamb's Greensboro home. The guns look like these weapons, a 380 caliber Bursa and a 45 caliber Smith & Wesson M&P pistol. Colonel Randy Powers with the Guilford County Sheriff's Department says Randall Lamb is not a suspect and that taking his guns is simply a precaution. To be sure that we've covered every possibility, we want to eliminate any suspects or suspicion of suspects. Powers says eight members of the sheriff's office are currently working the case, five detectives and three supervisors. He adds that investigators are following up leads provided by members of the community, but says so far there were no surprises in the case. Right now, there's no true, clear answer as to why all this took place. You think you'll ever know? Probably not, but at least we can narrow what didn't happen. And a check of court records, or actually the Sheriff's Department records, shows that Randall Lamb did have a permit to buy those handguns. He did not, however, have a permit to have a concealed weapon on him. Now, we asked Colonel Powers about that today. He says that the gun at the time of the shooting was in a bag in the back seat of the car, therefore out of his reach and not a violation of the law. So there's no pursuing of that at this point in time. Pleasant Garden was left trying to make sense of the senseless. Investigators uncovered two rambling suicide notes in Mary Ann's car in which she admitted her crimes and apologized for the pain caused while still insisting she had been wronged in life. 
Between deep depression, her grief over Beth's death, and fear of public humiliation over the affair, she had simply lost her grip on reality. It's been more than two weeks since that deadly shooting rampage in Guilford County that left five children and a woman death, dead. Police say Marianne Holder shot her sons, her niece, her nephew, and her son's girlfriend before turning the gun on herself. And now a man who knew Holder very well is talking exclusively with WXII. The man she was dating up is opening up, and Arthur Mondale joins us live this morning with more on what he had to say. Arthur? The man, Mary Ann Holder's boyfriend, David Stokes, who had a lot to say exclusively to WXI. First, though, that he's actually losing hope that Guilford County officials and investigators will be able to answer the questions that he and so many others probably so desperately want to hear. He also described exclusively to her cameras that this is the most difficult two weeks of his entire life. He laid a lot on the table in this interview yesterday. Uh, he says not too long before the shooting, he actually had finalized lunch plans with Mary Ann Holder, saying the Holder household was filled with love in the days leading up to the shooting the same as any other day. We also gave other details saying he didn't know much about Randall Lamb, the only person still alive from the shooting. If you recall, Holder at one point got a restraining order against him, claiming he had harassed her. Stokes does say he actually witnessed this firsthand on Holder's birthday back in June. Another list of questions, though. Take a listen. For the last eight months, it's been a great, a great eight months, man. It's, my family has been her family, and you know, her family's been my family. I love those kids, man. They're the five of the best kids you'd ever want to meet. Really believe before all this happened, this is what was going to be the rest of my life. That's what it was going to be for the rest of my life. We'd already planned, we'd already, I mean, already, already talked about next year moving in together, you know, and maybe starting a life together. And again, the children Stokes was referring to were buried on Saturday. This investigation remains in Guilford County. I'm Arthur Mondale for WXR 12 News. All right, thank you. Mary Ann's mother, Frances, and close friends like David Stokes rejected the official version of events. They refused to believe this devoted mother could willingly take her own life and murder the children she seemed to love so dearly. But the physical evidence told a story Mary Ann's defenders could not reconcile in their hearts. The gun found with her body matched the ballistics of the shooting spree. It seemed impossible to them that a woman buying groceries and making sandwiches for her kids on Saturday could turn calculating killer overnight. But mental illness does not always follow reason. Pleasant Garden was left with deep psychic scars. Five promising young lives were cut short for reasons they will never comprehend. The families clung to their faith and to one another to survive the grieving process. Counselors provided support for the children of the town forced to grapple with the idea that such evil could lurk within their peaceful community. Cam, it's been a couple of difficult weeks, especially for the children who went to school with some of the victims. We sat down with the crisis team leader for the Guilford County School System, and she says this tragedy has been one of the hardest for her more than 30-year career. I couldn't imagine this happening anywhere. And I can't imagine what could be much worse. When Susan Eubanks got the call that her counseling services would be needed at several schools immediately, she had no idea the magnitude of the tragedy. Never dreaming that it was going to be five under 18. And as each passing day brought more pain and loss, some of the elementary school children displayed signs of fear. Several of them asked their parents, would you do this to me? While the older teens raised questions about Mary Ann Holder, the woman at the center of this tragedy. How could she do that? Because so many of them knew the whole family and had never seen a side like that. Eubanks says the best thing to do is reassure children of all ages that a tragedy like this is not typical and explain to teens that social media is often filled with rumors and they should only talk about what's true or factual. Another difficult part of the grieving process will be the funerals, which Eubanks says can help provide closure, but she encourages parents to attend services with their child. They need to have that support of a caring adult. The ones that were very close to it will never forget it, but their lives will go back to a sense of normalcy. 
Now the visitation for the Suttles, Wood and Smith children will be held here at the Family Life Center on the first floor inside the gymnasium. The funeral services will be held Friday inside the main sanctuary of the church that sits right next door to the Family Life Center. For now, I'm live in Pleasant Garden. Stephanie Brzezinski, back to you, Cam. Thank you, Stephanie. Marianne Holder is accused of shooting those five children before taking her own life. A private service for Holder has already been held. Again, the children's funeral will be open to the public. In the years since that dark November day, Mary Ann Holder has become an object lesson about the power mental illness holds over even the most seemingly devoted parents. Her name remains whispered in Pleasant Garden as a cautionary tale about the tragedy that results when someone loses their grasp on reality and descends into darkness capable of unspeakable violence. For a town used to languid Sundays filled with fellowship, the specter of Mary Ann Holder irrevocably shattered their sense of peace and safety. Whether driven by madness, rage, or anguish, her actions dealt a blow no amount of time can fully heal. Hers is a story those who lived through it will never forget, though they long to find closure. A legacy of sorrow and lives ended too soon are all that remain where once a loving mother and her happy children lived before that tranquility was torn apart in one deadly morning.